Okay, folks, and with that, we're finally in. We had some trouble loading the lobby. Our host unfortunately crashed, which uh, made it hard to pause. But once again, Team welcome to Star Time Ladder to Season back. 13 Europe. We've got Yellow Submarine versus Team Liquid. And uh, Team Liquid, unfortunately, just coming off a loss to CIS Rejects. Let's see how they're going to play this time. Once again, I'm Lama Down Under, and I'm going to be joined by Clairvoyance this time. How you doing? Uh, can you hear me well? I can indeed. Five seconds that's good, that's remaining. good. Uh, I'm doing quite alright. Just having a little bit of trouble with the uh, Dota TV. Do you know what uh, what option Reserve I have to turn on? Uh, for open mic? Yeah, You just mic. need to say Dota open team mic back. for team. You check that box. For team. Yep, and you should be good back. to go. So, a bit... Great. A bit ambiguous team for them, but back. either way, we're getting into this. And Yellow Submarine! Obviously banning out SF because it's good on Radiant and the Tusk that Jerex plays so well, as does Mind Control. Doom, do you think it's going to be a Darkseer ban out or something else for Liquid? Ten seconds remaining. Uh, to be completely honest, I'm not familiar with what Yellow Submarine pick. I see some of their players and there are obviously some old names there with Dyer PSM team. being a short Navi member, Scandal being one of the best mid players uh, circa 2012, something like that, team or around Liquid's that era anyway. And Artez, I guess the remnants of some of the CIS, uh, I guess some of like the CIS rejects type of team they are. Team yes. So it looks like it'll be the Wisp ban. There was a big shuffle recently um, with Navi breaking up, with CIS, CIS rejects like breaking up. A lot of teams have kind of shuffled and the Yellow Submarine team is new. And uh, yesterday they took a win over Team Bad English. But other than that, I haven't seen too much out of this lineup. But Team Liquid securing themselves a nice wombo combo in Dark, Sia, and Wyvern. Team Bad English, huh? There is a Team Bad English. Their team English was not in fact bad in the lobby. I see, I see. So That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, um, this is a typical opening coming out of Liquid now. Uh, something that they've run many times in the past. I guess in the previous patch they would have ran this with the Lina as opposed to the Darkseer early on. But the Darkseer of course being one of the best offlane options this patch. And we have the Winter Wyvern which synergizes so well, not only in the laning stages, by being able to push out and harass, but also with that remaining. ultimate wombo combo with the Vacuum as well as the Winter's Curse. Yeah, it's Five really Stella. Remaining. At the same time, Yellow Submarine picking up the Queen of Pain, Team who has like a pick ban rate, back. I think the highest in the month of October. Every and, game, every yeah. game, for sure. <laughs> and yep. then Dazzle <laughs> as well. Um, always good to Shallow Grave. It Dara just helps the Queen of Pain back. be a little bit more ham, or of course, make those gank attempts by Team Liquid, uh, make them dive maybe too far. Yeah, and it's also a pretty good general option against the Darkseer, I would say, Team because Liquid. Darkseer is just one of, those, uh, one of those heroes that force the extreme amount of sustain on your lane and Dazzle provides that with the Shadow Wave because most carries and supports they will not have enough regen or the ability to harass out the Darkseer completely. Dazzle is one of the potent ones to do so. Yeah and they go with the Viper again they seem to love they have a really great lineup uh, or ability to play around Falta on the Viper and get work done. He plays it very aggressively as well and so I wouldn't be surprised if Liquid try to go for another hero that can maybe roam mid and gank because that's how they Played it in the last set. They just let uh, someone gank mid, set up kills, easy kills for Viper, of course, with that nether toxin and the poison attack. But Yellow sub, gotta find a good way to respond to a Viper in Five mid, which seems, remaining. I mean, Queen of Pain should be okay, I guess. She can blink away from a lot of the danger. Reserve time. Uh, she can, but Viper is one, the, one of the known counters to Queen of Pain at the middle lane, because if you Shadow Strike the Viper, you're dealing with Corrosive Skin, which actually does more Team damage to you over time, turn. and it slows you as well. So it's just one of those lanes that the Queen of Pain, who excels at the middle line by being able to trade, is unable to trade effectively against Dyer the Viper. Team pick. So it's a scaling concern, like one of those things where like DK or Viper, they just beat you after a certain level. Yeah, definitely true. And with Spirit Breaker, that's the beginnings of the gank lineup. Um, hard on a Queen because she has a blink, but of course blink doesn't disjoint the charge. So even if she blinks away, Spirit Breaker and Viper can sometimes just dive her anyway. Yeah, it's certainly possible. I mean, with the Dazzle, it's definitely uh, easier said than done. Remaining. But it is like it is a lineup right now where I favor for the side of Team Five Liquid because remaining. they have a lot of aggression, a lot of different options, and most importantly, very strong lane presence. And Yellow Submarine, Reserve you know, time. despite the good laning heroes they have, it almost seems like they're already on the back foot with the Clockwork especially now. Uh, a hero that's known to be very potent at level 6 and somewhat solo kill pressure applying but uh, without the good lane setup that he gets, you know, he's limited to his level 2, level 3 after the cog blocks on creeps. And uh, just has a hard time killing solo killing heroes these days. And Viper is definitely one of those heroes that are very hard to solo kill with a clockwork. Yeah, and 
Now a Rubik pick up, they're gonna be the ones Ooh. who get that. It's squishy, man. Their lineup is really, really squishy. Like, very susceptible all around. Like, they'll always have to get the right jump and be able to blow up one or two targets to start the fight. And I'm not sure if that's possible against Team Liquid's aggression. Yeah, I feel like it's something where they went for the Rubik because everything you can steal from Winter is really nice and everything that you can get, obviously from Viper, you can always get the Viper Strike, but I don't... As you said, it's very squishy. I don't know if Rubik's going to be alive for long enough to make this happen. Yeah, I, I don't know. At this point, uh, the only way they can salvage this is have a safe lane carried like a Slark type of hero that might just end up outscaling every hero. Because Liquid already recognized that they, they have all these squishy heroes in the early game and say, hey, they're not going to be able to survive without a hard carry that scales. And uh, even if they do, they still have like ridiculous amounts of CC and control options in the late game with Wyvern and Spirit Breaker on the one target. So, any mage already has been banned out. PL is the next ban because uh, I guess Liquid, they don't have the best options against PL because they have a Viper. But uh, Yellow Submarine, I don't, I don't really see too many options besides something like a Slark. And even then, I, I wonder how they can survive the early game with it. Yeah. It's, it's going to be tough. Definitely. So, Liquid feeling like they're in a good place to do... And also, in the series they just played in, uh, for the with CIS rejects. They pretty much wiped them the first game, and then CIS rejects kind of went back to the drawing boards with drafts and managed to come out in the next two games. But Team Liquid had a lineup that they felt very comfortable executing, looking like this one as well, just missing a hard carry. And the Gyros banned out, the Juggies as well. Both of those heroes were played in the last series. Um, But certainly, actually they banned out the Anti-Mage. I guess just yep, for the docks here, and I don't know if Viper really cares too much about that, though. Uh, well, Viper does, because if you don't close out the game in 20 minutes against the AM, it's kind of like you have no solution to the AM past that point. So it was a good ban from them, recognizing that, and they obviously wanted to pick the Viper into the Queen of Pain and the Dazzle. So, uh, again, it was like a well-crafted idea coming from K-God himself, Kuroki. But, uh, I wanted to ask you, in the previous series, Liquid lost, or...? Liquid lost. So what happened is game one was very much in favor of Team Liquid, a complete stomp. Um, you know, one of those games where they had just too many kills early on, won the game at about 20 minutes in. Game two was more even with Yellow Submarine coming up on top, and game three, Yellow Submarine picked a Husker. I'm pretty sure Team Liquid knew it was coming because they picked up a Windrunner and then just let them, They the AA ban came out and Liquid had an opportunity to ban Husker and they didn't. But they fell prey to the Husker, who got online before their Windrunner did. So now it is going to be Slark. So, and yeah. I think that happens okay. to good teams, right? Every Sometimes you get Huskard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. It's just one of those heroes that if you don't have the right counters or the right lineup to deal with, it's uh, you really don't have much options. And, you know, the Slark pick up here, again, I, I feel like I feel like Liquid actually stole the pick from Yellow Submarine because they looked at the lineup and said, hey, this is the only hero that you have left. Slark is actually the only hero in this game that's able to lane against the Darkseer fairly decently with a support and scale into the mid late game and still cause a huge problem because of his ability to wear off disables but most importantly just farm really really fast in comparison to what Liquid offers and Slark is a hero that like if you have isolated heroes on the map the Slark will snipe you at one point he might just end up feeding off you if you're exposed so this for me it's like a it's a partial deny pick it's also a very good pick because it's a, like a hero like Rubik does absolutely nothing against Slark it's like all clicking heroes the, they just have no effect on Slark whatsoever. Yeah, and as we talked about, they're really squishy. Slark's gonna have a field day here. I'm, and also against the Clockwork in lane, even they can maybe make some good stuff happen. I, I'm really liking Liquid's lineup, and I'm not quite sure what Yellow Submarine can pick up to salvage this. Although, of course, a lot's gonna depend on laning. If Yellow Submarine get a lead, maybe they can just have the Queen of Pain picking off people all over the map. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe like, uh, I don't know, just this is random, but maybe Necrolite. Uh, I, I really don't know what other, what other options they have here. Uh, Sven, Necrolite, something big, but even Sven, like, there's so many kiting potentials and lockdown abilities coming out of Team Liquid. Morphling! So that's their option, to replicate the Viper as well. Um, something that Artez has played a lot in the past, actually, when he was on HR. But uh, not not a hero that I've found to have many much successes in the recent patches. And certainly not a hero I was expecting either. He actually, it's really funny, going into Nanyang, he hadn't been played very much. And then uh, I think I, Avicii played him a bunch and won with him. So it was like, oh, good, Morphling's good. And then, of course, they like they were the only ones who played him. So then Morphling had a really good win rate. Unfortunately, they did end up falling with it. But I don't know how it's going to go. 
It's... It needs a lot. You know the... There's a nice thing with Morphling, actually. When you replicate the Viper, mm -hmm. and then the replicate attacks the Viper. Oh yeah, infinite. Yeah, it triggers the Corrosive skin, it just goes back and forth. So it's actually... It's something that was used in the past when Viper was getting first picked by, like, LGD every time. But uh, again, the Morphling days are over. And uh, Viper days are kind of over, kind of over as well. But we have an opportunity to pick the Viper in these kind of games against the Queen of Pains, against the Dazzles, against squishy Intel heroes. Yeah, really nice to see. Now I'm going to quickly introduce the teams. Hopefully this isn't a long pause. We've had a lot of pause gaming earlier today. Um, and Always. Yeah, just something sometimes Dota gives up. We've of course got Farta on the Viper, Kuroki on Spirit Breaker, Jerax on that Wyvern, Matumba Man, who sometimes I... I don't know why, I have a lot of trouble saying Matumba Man in team fights. I'm pretty sure I said Matumba Ton, and then also Matumba Banana, which is a life choice. But either way, he's going to be on that hard carry of Slark and then Mind Control on the docks here. And tossing it over to you to introduce Yellow Submarine, who have not all lo uh, loaded in. Alright, sure, I'll try it. I'm not good at this <laughs> stuff. But uh, Yellow Submarine, PSM, playing the Captain, and uh, I believe the Dazzle at this point. We got Artez, the former carry of HR, playing... The Morphling. Scandal, former glorious mid lane of Empire, if uh, if it is the same Scandal, of course. Yeah. Playing the Queen of Pain now. Miposhka, who's been a CIS uh, semi-pro competitive player for a long time, playing the Clockwork now. And Goritz, I believe another remnant of uh, one of the former teams, coming in here with the Rubik. Yeah, this is definitely, as you said, this is a lot of common CIS names, and it is the same Scandal, so... Wearing a really weird set where Queen of Pain can't see. That doesn't seem like the best of strategies. This is kind of funny though because I feel like Morphling, obviously someone who can be a really hard carry, but so can Slark. And I just feel like Slark has such a better mid game than the Morphling potentially, unless he somehow gets ahead here. So yeah, in general, like the the Morphling versus Darkseer thing, it was actually started by Burning uh, a couple of years back during the E Home Glory days when he would get Soul Ring and just spam the waveform against the Darkseer. Uh, and it was very effective, and that's when Morphling was really noticed. Uh, and then it became broken for a period of time, especially during the TI2 era. But uh, now, it's just, after so many nerfs to the stats and buffs to Darkseer even with the 25 second Iron Shells, Clarities, Mangles, all these things, they really add up to how the lane gets played out. And even with the Dazzle, again, I don't know, man. Morphling is definitely not what I thought they would pick. We'll see how it goes for them. Maybe they can make something happen. And there's always funny things that happen in games. Um, I've definitely seen teams get outdrafted, but, you know, end up getting a few early kills, which just snowballed the game for them. But they've got already an early smoke coming out from Yellow Submarine. And Doxia, not the easiest hero to catch, but if you come at him from behind without him knowing, I actually would prefer a pincer here for them, but they just want to find anybody. And usually if you've got five men on one, you're going to get a kill. Although, mind control, will he be surrounded? There's going to be a telekinesis from Goretch. Let's see if Mipocha, oh, in the sh cogs and mind control going down here slowly but surely. A couple more auto attacks going to clockwork. So nice start for him. Yeah, not a bad start, especially if he's going to play the solo lane against the Darkseer, uh, which it looks like he is actually with the stealth shield. And I didn't really mention this because I thought they were going to safe lane try lane the Darkseer, but it looks like they're going to go aggressive and try to dodge and try to dodge the dual lane potential. It's a Darkseer Spirit Breaker dual lane, and that's usually hard to crack with squishy Intel heroes. Yeah. We've also got a charge onto Scandal, which does not steal him the rune, but Kuroki just doing some early harassment. Going to make Queen of Pain's life harder. She actually doesn't. I'm assuming she's ferrying out a salve immediately. Yeah. So. Yep. Standard mid lane. And of course, PSM's here to heal her up as well if. Uh, if he would like to. I, th I thought it would be a good idea. Maybe pulling another Tangle before he leaves, but hey, he did get a little bit of gold from the first blood, so. Yeah, these days, oh goodness, Arctic Burn with, oh, Scandal needs he's to dead. blink away. He does, oh, Shadow Strike first, and yeah, he's dead. A bit of a mistake there from Scandal skilling that up, and that's what happens when they know what you have for the first engagement. I was going to say how it's really common these days. The Wyvern comes mid-level one, Arctic Burns a bit, goes back to her lane. And so Dazzle would be there too, but oh, knowing you have Shadow Strike, not good. Yep. And he just uh, Shadow Strike as soon as he got to the lane and fought a just hit level 2, so he Corrosive Skin. You can see now, Scandal's actually going to take more damage from Shadow Striking than the Viper is. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just not a not a fair trade when you, ca when you cast Shadow Strike. Again, and he's casting it again. He's going to blink away this time, but as you said, Scandal taking quite a bit of damage from that Corrosive Skin. Not a fun lane. Um, looking elsewhere, we do have Mind Control up against Miposhka on top. This lane, 
generally feel like Darkseer has a lot of freedom here. He can wave cut, he can do what he wants. Maybe Mephoshka can get some mana draining on with Cogs, but feels like Darkseer is going to be very happy. Mm -hmm. And of course, now Vada's coming back. He's already purchased up the Ring of Basti, so he's going to be able to complete a Ring of Aquila. Again, just so much more pressure coming out, and we know Scandal does not have a salve available anymore, so he's very limited to his regen. And his bottle's not coming out anytime soon either, because he, even though he has 5 CS, He's already died once, and it's only going to get worse for him in the lane. Just, it's, a, it's a very difficult matchup, and even Crow is coming in just to harass a bit with the charge potential. Yep. And this, this is pretty much a complete dominance for Liquid here at the middle line. How do you salvage this? If you're, you know, you're the co-op, you're probably a little bit upset here um, on Scandal. You're like, okay, this isn't how I wanted it to go. Do you say, hey, supports, maybe you can stack up something. I'm a Queen of Pain. I can take some stacks. Do you ask Rubik to come mid with his haste? I don't think Rubik can help you out. No, not against the Viper. Especially a Viper that just builds pure stats, something like a Ring of Aquila. Look at this guy, he's already levels, uh, he's got 7 armor at level 3. And he's got corrosive skin, so he's just that much harder to kill. Um, in terms of salvaging the lane, uh, to be completely frank, it's impossible. Again, with this lane setup, uh, the Morphling needs all the attention he can, he can get from the supports. And they're aggro trying, which means that they just cannot rotate into their own woods, otherwise they just lose out on the lanes. Yeah. So, th from the early game, from the get-go, with the draft as well as the setup in the lanes, Liquid are coming out vastly ahead. And they're going for a charge onto top. Miposhka, he can definitely cogs this out, but it might be able to come from the trees a bit sneakily. Miposhka, he should be able to cogs it, and he gets it, and so now Kuroki, sad, monolith, but, uh, and taking actually a lot of tower harass, finally swapping off that aggro, and again in mid! Now Dazzle taking a lot of harassment, both Scandal and Dazzle getting low. It's just what you talked about, Viper is dominating this lane. Yeah, it's a Viper against Intel's, like, squishy Intel heroes. I mean, they can actually send the Rubik and the Dazzle, and this Viper will still fight them all. It's to that extent right now because of the snowballing factor. Yeah, so... Um, I agree with you as well. We've now got this problem of they've rotated the Dazzle, and now this Tri-Lane... I don't know if they were hoping for kills with the Morph Lane, but you're certainly not getting them now when you're down a man. <laughs> uh, even if the Dazzle was here, like, the kill potential is very limited. Unless they, unless they like lift the Slark into like three creeps and do a massive heal bomb or something, it's mm -hmm. just not going to happen. So, feeling a bit unfortunate for Yellow Submarine, and it might even be uh, something where you want to end up rotating your heroes just because you're getting... I mean, I guess Slark is... Actually, no, he's getting nothing on bottom. I didn't realize. So, uh, that's something. Yeah, he's, in terms of CS, it's not bad. But again, when the env enemy starts investing three heroes in the offlane, where they're not in a good position, to try and shut you down and you're still level 4 by 4 minutes, it's like, it's decent. Because you know Matumba man, he's gonna catch up on his farm when he hits level 6. He's gonna start yeah. jungling with his uh, Dark Pact. And again, they won't be able to stop him. But here we go, Fada. They're going for a gank on him, it looks like he's taking a lot of damage. He's still tanky, so tanky. And he pops one charge as he almost lives there because of those. And look at how low Scandal gets, it's what you talked about, the corrosive skin. They also managed to pick off Wyvern in the bottom lane and now Ortez, he's gonna just TP out while morphing strength. And they managed to pick up some kills for Yellow Submarine, but you had, as you said, expending three heroes on mid and them almost going down. Yeah, it's like, uh, that's just one of those kills that they had to do it, but it could have gone so bad for them if there was like one support camping at the back lines, especially someone like Groki. But I think he was showing himself and they realized, and, or rec recognized that at least. But uh, I think that's also a product of Fada doing a really, like a really greedy build. I know Bottle is not really something you want to go for on Viper these days, but he has like absolutely zero region whatsoever. So I think most of the time when he takes any harassment, it's going to take a lot of time to build that up again in his life points. And I think the reason why that gank happened is actually because of that. Because he wasn't, uh, he wasn't full when they fought. Yeah. So we will see as well. Um, they don't actually have any stacks out yet for Matumba Man. And that's something, as you mentioned, I think will be really important for helping him catch up. The Queen of Pain is getting a couple made for her, so hopefully there'll be some salvaging of Scandal's farm, but Matumba Man might be not in the best of moods as the game progresses, although now he's starting to have a much better time. He's suddenly out CSing the Morphling. I mean, I guess pushing him out of lane, doing enough work, and of course the gank in middle freeing up some space there, even though the Wyvern did end up dying. Although, as I say this, a lot of damage going out on Matumba Man. Yep, yeah, he's got a salve and he's got a level 6. He'll be completely fine, though. Yeah. So... Um, suddenly feeling pretty good. I'm a little bit surprised by how slow this game is, just because they did run the aggro try, but as you said, it's not really a kill lane for them, and Dazzle. neither side that interested. I mean, you'd love a kill if it came your way, but you're not going to go out of your way because it could turn on you very false Dazzle. when you're fighting into something like a Dazzle. Right, right. The main objective of this was definitely to dodge the Darkseer Spirit Breaker potential dueling, 
because they could have like they could have lost their intel heroes like left and right, and Morphling would have gotten pressured out of lane as well. Even then, as you see, like uh, as you mentioned, even with the kill and decent CS, I guess uh, not only is Matumi Man leading in CS, but also for a period of time, you can see the Stark just solo zoning the morph yeah. because of the level difference as well as the fact that we have a melee hero with a poor man shield versus a range hero without without one. It's difficult, and this is why uh, aggro trialings and putting carries in the off lane is just generally advised against. Yeah. Now, something else I wanted to point out, though, is that we have some interesting levels floating around. Kuroki's still level 2. This will happen to your roaming spirit breaker, but we all 6 minutes in, and he needs to maybe get a kill, get something done. Otherwise, he's going to be getting that nether strike very late, and they certainly need that lockdown for Scandal. And as I say, this Kuroki hookshot it on. He is going to maybe try to charge away, but one more auto attack will do it. Gorge getting that kill. At the same time on bottom, Matumba Man. Oh, he goes down as well. I thought he was going to get away for sure there. Wow. I'm surprised as well that uh, there's like no disables. Morphling, did he wait for that? He waveformed over the top of Matumba Man's head, and Matumba Man was playing a little bit too low. He, oh, I see. Yeah. He went a bit in, in a bit riskily, trying to get some harassment out, it looks like. So, and they're going to get. Is Gorich going for the deep ward? Yeah. So, a nice... Yep. I actually would have preferred one there to see the rotations, but I guess this one also gives vision over here. So, it's something. Yeah, any deep ward at this point is pretty good to have in general because it shows that you were able to get in that position in the first place. But uh, that, that kill on Matumba Man, definitely really big. Uh, something I didn't expect. And I was really looking at the top lane when they three men ganked the, uh, ganked the Spirit Breaker. Yeah. And that was like really not worth it for them. 100%. He's level 2. He's second to bottom on the net worth shot. Yeah, it's... like uh, your first clockwork hook being used for that and then having to go back to heal for that. Don't know. It's it's just something that they got because it was like available to them right there. But Scandal rotating in 2, like that really hurts him. And so now he's forced to just stay at top. And I guess to an extent he can't really lane against the Viper. But we can already see the Queen of Pain is vastly behind on his game. Only 16 CS so far yeah. compared to Fada's 47. Yeah. So, Fada having a, a ball. Now, what do you go? I know a lot of Slocks, especially when I'm casting NA Dota, they love going Midas first on this hero, but considering this Slock didn't have the Matumba Man, not having the best of starts, does he have uh, maybe just rush the Sanja Nyasha off to some treads? What's the play? Uh, I'm a believer of the Midas myself, especially in games like these, because Midas is a great comeback item, and attack speed is fantastic on Slark. But, uh, I don't know, he might just go treads into Shadow Blade. It's yeah. very possible what he what he does is like uh, amongst uh, multiple different options, but I do think Midas is the best. He'll just farm the woods non-stop, and they can never kill him. And if they can't kill him, he's eventually just gonna win. The charge is gonna latch, but again, Ortez, he does have another waveform to get out, and Matumba Man taking so much damage from that. This is just what he can't stand up to. The waveform doing way too much work, and every time it comes out, he's having to back off. So, these ganks on Morphling not latching, and I think this is really hurting Liquid's lineup. Yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, it's it's weird how they're taking this. I, I guess the dazzle is really a big, big issue or a big reason why this is happening because he's constantly applying that heal bomb threat to the slark, but also he's just he's there for the grave, and they don't have a hard lockdown yet because the supports are neither, neither supports are level six, but it's just weird how they're approaching the game. If they just push out the lanes and farm, and play around the darks here right now, who's the strongest hero on their on their game aside from the viper? then I, I think they would have a better chance, better time. Speaking of the strongest hero, he's about to get hookshotted. Will they be able to finish him off with Scandal here? Might just auto-attack him to death, and that is a goodbye mind control. And they're just getting much better pickups from Yellow Submarine. The farm, actually, on Liquid, when it comes to CS, the Viper and, as you talked about, the Dogs here farming really well, but they're not getting any sort of picks, and I like the Dogs here has wall early. I'm not quite sure where he's going to be able to use it. Dyer's middle tower. Yeah, I, it's uh, that was really weird too. But I mean, it is clockwork. It is it is one of those heroes that snipe out of darks here Radiant when he's isolated. Tower, one of the reasons I think tower. is because uh, mind control actually went Dyer's bottle. Tower, There's Sunday not many darks that go bottle these days, uh, at least from what I've seen. They usually just go for the soul ring mana boots. But if you do go for bottle, like well, a lot of times you'll go for the rune as well. Dyer's and uh, you know what? I'm I'm starting to notice why. It's because they have a viper at mid, and viper doesn't yeah. get bottle. So y you want somebody to go for the runes or have rune presence. But that's, that's the kind of play that it opens up to. If you go for those runes, a clockwork can hook you. So, you have to watch out for that. Yep. 
And in bottom, Ortez just having a, the time of his life. He's picked up his CS a bunch. Splinter Blast gonna harass him a little bit, but he's got options and he's got a Dazzle backing him up. He could be going for the Midas as well on Morphling. I'm not super sure. Because I feel like he would have finished the treads if that's what he was going for. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, this game, I don't think... The uh, thing is, Morphling with the Midas is never bad, really. But this is one of those games where I feel like the way he's played so far, he wants to keep that up. And to keep that up, he needs stats, as much stats as possible. To the point where I would imagine something like a Treads Manta or a Treads Yasha. Oh, the wall is good. dropped on Scandal up top and Mind Control manages to take him down. The hookshot from Miposhka actually misses. And if Mind Control can juke around, he's going to get out. And he has a surge for sure. And now Miposhka in a lot of trouble. Fodder pushed back by the Cogs, but he should be able to work his way around. He's pretty fast. And with Spirit Breaker coming in as well, Miposhka going down. What a play coming out from the Darkseer and the eventual death of Miposhka. He puts an Ion Shell on Fodder, not exactly the best Ion Shell target, but you know, it's the, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. It is indeed, and yeah, now we have, uh, in his inventory, we have three sources of mana region, Soul Ring, Bottle, and Mana Boots, which I personally think is overkill, but hey, if you can spam that shell, just go for it. Why not? Yeah, I agree. As you said, it's a bit of overkill. Um, it does feel like sometimes you can even get by with the Soul Ring for quite a while. We see a lot of Darkseers go Soul Ring into Mech. So, uh, after with just Brown Boots. But personal preference, and as you said, the Rune Control, really powerful. If Queen of Pain is suddenly running at you with a haste, you're gonna have a bad time. So, Radiant speaking of Scandal, working on that catch-up is not looking Radiant's good, though. Bottom tower is under attack. Yep, Matuma Man's almost gotten, uh, gotten hunted down here. They have two wards in the woods trying to scout him out. And the uh, clockwork's ob obviously rotated in, so it's gonna be a tower for a tower trade because Liquid already got it at top, and Scandal... What? Uh, I did I'm not, not sure catch that. that. It, was he just too slow? His blink was on cooldown, apparently. Okay. Yeah, maybe he slowed like, out. I feel like if he, t if he blinked out of a, of a chase scenario, he could have just TP'd right after the blink because they had no more stuns to follow up. It almost looked like they just walked up to him and finished him off. <laughs> that does happen sometimes, right? You make a mistake. They've got some really deep wards on the side of Liquid already coming out, making sure that they have a lot of map presence, and Scandal could have thought, hey, I'm behind, you know, I'm on my tier 2, I should be safe. <laughs> and instead, Fodder is like, this is my jungle. I live here. I have my drums up. That's another thing. Fodder's gone for a very, very fast build. He might even pick up the Sanjan Yasha. He's got an easier, you know, Sometimes we see Vipers go mech, of course not the case here because there's a Darkseer who would love to, in the event of an Orchid, get up those Guardian Greaves. So Vipers freed up to go a bit more of that Sanjan Yasha, potentially some other items if he needs to build for damage as well. Yeah, uh, Vada's actually like a very, very well-known Viper slash Razor player. And I think lately he's changed up his item build on both heroes. Uh, he used to go like mech every game on both Razor and Viper. But from what I've seen in his recent Razor games, he's gone S and Y every single game. Uh, it's my first time seeing drums on him, um, on the Viper. I don't know how good it is, but uh, I, I think he'll be going for S and Y next, just given by his record. Yeah, it's not something I've seen him run either, because usually one person on the team gets the drums, another gets the Aquila, just so that you don't have so many items you potentially have to sell super late game. But Jerex, he's slowing up an illusion. We've got a rocket coming in, and they've got the telekinesis onto Fodder. The hookshot as well, but I don't know if Fodder minds too much, but Clockwork, he's got backup, and that is a dead Viper if I've ever seen one. Pure damage doesn't care about your corrosive skin, so... A nice pick-off. At the same time, top lane being pushed in by Matumba Man, and he can just... Walk on away with that passive. That was a really, really big kill. Even though, yes, uh, Yellow Submarine rotated five heroes, uh, the fact that they got Fada, who is the most farmed hero on the map, means they're able to pressure that much harder. Of course, they're still going up against the uh, Dark Zero Iron Shot with heroes that don't really push out the wave that hard. Attack. But again, a really big pick, nevertheless. And now we're just gonna have this carry versus carry thing where both heroes farm the opposite sides of the map. Kroki does have ulti though. Yeah, and we will see what oh. happens. Ortez is being stunned up. Can they actually catch him? He uses his own stun and the Shallow Grave comes out and suddenly Ortez is away. Matumba Band's like, hey Kuroki, I'm out. And Maposhka, he's coming in. Not a hookshot for a while, but now Matumba Man coming back. He immediately purges off the lift from Goretch and he manages to leap over the wave there. They see him though. And the hookshot, it's getting close to being off of cooldown. Seven more seconds. But here comes Fodder coming in on the back signs. Goretch going down. And now Mind Control, he is ready. Could potentially, no, he misses the vacuum, but Kuroki 
doesn't care about your cogs. Oh, hookshot over to the Jerax, and suddenly I don't think he wanted to be near Jerax either, although Jerax taking a lot of damage with the blade mail, but there is the Winter's Curse and Fodder going in. Just gonna be auto-attacking people. Actually going for the body blocks. A bit of a f uh, funky move there. I wasn't expecting that one, and just trying to see if he can also catch PSM. But no such luck, so they managed to turn around that weird engagement onto the Morphling and get two kills out of it. Yeah. Kuro was paying for that Dazzle kill too because he saw that he had no TP and he yeah. was just saying go, go, go. But that kill became so difficult because I think Kuro cancelled his first ultimate. I'm not, I'm not sure like when he was channeling the ulti, he just like stopped and he just casted it again or something. I'm not sure what happened. Because if they got that ultimate off right away, with the bash and the ultimate damage, they would have just bursted down the Morphling before the supports could rotate in and actually grave him and delay the death and everything. So that was that was kind of weird. As a matter of fact, he actually didn't go down. Um, yeah, no, the Morphling around, lived. Said, but, so uh, I figured he died, but oh. no, he actually just didn't die. So I, he, I think I don't know what happened. He wandered away, so he got he got healed, he got shallow graved, so he got out of the fight, and then he started to come back in. And then the moment that Mutumba Man appeared, he was like, "Oh, you're on your own team." So. Yeah. Um, and that's, I that was mean, weird though, I, I don't know why Kuro cancelled the channeling of his ultimate, because that was a kill for sure, I think. No. A bit unfortunate there. So now we're going to be seeing Matumba Man lifted up again. He does get the purge, it's a bit late, and they have the hookshot, but again, Dark Pact doing work, and now he just manages to pounce away. I don't think they can catch anybody else with hookshot down, and they might actually get engaged upon. Mind Control is there and ready. He has got the wall vacuum. They go on Gorech. They don't even need the wall vacuum. Maposhka, I think, stopping the rest of them from going in, but Artez comes in. He is in. He has... He, the ability to replicate out, I'm just not quite sure why he even came into the fight and putting himself in a bad position. He's got the TP, but do they have any sort of stopping mechanism? And that would be a no. With the Winter's Curse on cooldown, I think it's really rough to lock down a Morphling. Yeah, certainly. A pretty close call for them, but uh, they do get out scot free for the time being. Again, though, uh, even though they rotate heroes in with two free plays, they just, they are going to have a hard time just pushing uh, with these Intel squishy heroes. Their win condition this game is that they have to wipe the heroes of Liquid. And uh, again, that Viper kill was really good earlier, but I'm not sure how many of those they're going to find, because that was kind of the free kill when Fada just walked into the five heroes. I don't think even with the vision advantage, I don't think they're going to get that again. Now, if you're Fada here, are you thinking, I feel like Sanjin Yasha is nice just because they're a bunch of stuff that does go through BKB. I mean, I guess you can not have to worry about Morphling's waveform and stun and Rubik's uh, telekinesis and Fade Bolt, but I don't know how much as someone with corrosive skin built into your hero you worry about that. Maybe just tanking up is the right way to go. Uh, I think both approach is fine. To be frank, if he gets BKB, like he won't die in the fights ever in this game. They just don't have enough physical damage right well, now. We have an him. engagement up top. They also use the vacuum on PSM. Gonna shallow grave himself. Should give Ortez time to get out as well. And unless they get a bash... Oh, the bash. Oh, but they use oh, the Winter's Curse as well. That's really unfortunate. It means there's no hope of locking down Ortez. And they're actually still going on him. But he's just gonna get out. I'm pretty sure he's still staying around. Just being a bit of a pain, and yeah, there he goes. Replicating yeah. away. Is it called replicating away? Uh, yeah, replicating, morphing away, whichever. Morphing away, so. Yeah. Just got out of there in the end. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice little cheeky move there, trying to harass a little bit more, grabbing himself an extra magic stick charge, I guess, but it really hurts him in the process. He's the carry, he's the most important hero, and Kuroki's more than happy, wasting all the time he can on the enemy one position hero. Yeah. A oh, hookshot onto Matumba, Matumba man. man. He should be able to pounce him one second. Can they body block him? No, and he's gonna yeah. go down. He blocked him. It was a nice move. He had to pounce right away after the hook because Miposka was already trying to get into position for it. Yeah. And by the time he did it, it was already too late. And that's the up and the downside, of course. As a slok, you can always kind of pounce into the cogs if the clockwork's trying to push you out and so on, but you can also be body blocked and not be able to escape with that pounce, so... Uh, charge stolen by Gorich. I don't think they're gonna follow up here. I think Yellow Submarine, yeah, they completely know that there are too many of Liquid's heroes nearby. Although Winter's Curse is down, so... Yeah, I just want to note that Charge actually wasn't stolen. Oh. Uh, Rubik, traditionally Rubik was really good against Spirit Breaker because you could steal the Charge, and uh, back then you could bash as well, I think. The, apply the greater bash with the charge. Yeah. Now, because of Empowering Haste, like any good Spirit Breaker will charge from across the map, and then they'll just click the Empowering Haste button, whether it's W or G. And then they just, like, you'll never steal it. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's very hard to steal. And even if you steal ultimate, it doesn't do the greater bash proc as it does for a Spirit Breaker. So, Rubik's not as good on against Spirit Breaker anymore as it used to be.
Now, both sides have a number of smokes. Oh, we have an engagement going out onto PSM. There's also a courier nearby. Nether Strike. He does have the Shallow Grave, of course. It's going to buy him some time. Can the rest of his team come in? TP rotations as well. The TP out. Oh, he's vacuumed back. But I don't know if this is good for Liquid. They're all around here. Fodder getting gone on. And now his team kind of blocked off by the cogs. Charge is going to come out, but will it be too late? Viper is on the deck. And now Kuroki, he could be in a spot of trouble. The rocket comes out, though. And with the wall down, I don't know how many of them want to pursue. They're so low. Posha getting bashed up. They use the Fade Bolt to, like, reduce his damage. And do, does Blade Mail coming back off cooldown? Doesn't matter. He is dead. Oh, Sonic dear. Wave missed on Kuroki. He gets another kill, and Kuroki will finally go down, but he got a bunch of people deaded. Now, Mind Control, I think he can just surge away. The Sonic Wave missing, really unfortunate. Yeah, I think... Uh, obviously, he didn't anticipate the turnaround on Rubik, but I think Kuroki noticed the life points dropping because he said, hey, there's an Iron Shell on me, and I'm a Spirit Breaker. Why not? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, uh, I'm not sure if it would have saved the kill from happening, but regardless, the Sonic Wave is only on cooldown for 40 seconds because he has the Aghanim Scepter, so that's fine. Yeah. Matuma Mana also picked up a new item just now. He picked up the Blink Dagger, and I think I think only European Slarks still do this over the Shadow Blade. Like, all the other Slarks, like NA and Chinese, I think they all go for Shadow Blades. So, I'm not sure. It's good for split pushing, though. Yeah, I very much agree with that, and it's something where as long as Fodder is making space, even though he Dyer's unfortunately went down, but it's something where the amount of time it takes to kill Fodder, Slot can get stuff done elsewhere on the map. Yeah. So, he is tanky. Now, Mind Control will have... He could actually pick up the Blink Dagger already, and I'm a little surprised... There we go. I was about to say, maybe he's saving up for something else, but he goes for the obvious choice, picking up the Blink Dagger. Yep, he'll have to drop an item for it. I'm not sure if he's going to just get rid of his TP because uh, there's obviously not that much pushing going on from Yellow Submarine, but here's an attempt on our test. Yeah, let's see. Nether Strike going to come out. Miposhka is close enough, and there's a vacuum, but they're stuck in the cogs. Actually pushed out. Maybe a misplay from Artez. They're going to catch Kuroki. Sonic Wave, Mind Control, healing up mostly from it. He doesn't have Dot on him. He didn't actually have the Blink delivered. Courier doing funky things. He finally gets the Blink, but here comes Matomba Man. Winter's Curse as well. Gorach is dead. Now they're working in on Scandal, of course. Has the Blink up if she wants it. Fara again, caught in the middle of everything, but Jerax with the Cold Embrace. He's not taking nearly enough damage, and with the wall down, how are they going to get over to the other side? Miposhka goes down. They'll gladly trade that for Wyvern, and oh, Scandal's going on Mind Control, though, now. Maybe he can actually stand here and fight, but not with the waveform coming through. A little bit surprised Matomba Man didn't re-engage, though. Yeah, I'm, I am the too, lockdown? I, I feel yeah. like there wasn't lockdown for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like, uh, I feel like he made, like, two really, uh, like, really backward blinks. Like, really safety blinks. There was one time after the Wyvern Curse where they killed the target, he just blinked away to Dark Pact himself from some debuffs. I'm not sure which was on him, but... And then, and then again, like, towards Radiant's the end there, he blinked away again instead of just going in on the quap. Yeah. I, I don't know. The, he had the Iron Shell on him. Like, he was strong. I think he could have actually cleaned up that fight. But uh, there was a lot of weave on him, weave stacks on him, so I can sort of understand his weariness. Yeah, so... And as it's something where he may not... Of course, we as Colsters have the whole vision. He may not have realized that a lot of things were on cooldown, maybe worried about somebody else being uh, the positioning. It can be scary, especially if you know that you're farming really well and you don't want to give them a big bounty. This game is really close, Dyer's that's the other thing. It's not at all like the other games Liquid has played today and... Um, oh. He just Midas the TP creep? That's a bit rude. Yeah, that was very nice. <laughs> of course, Artes, he has the bots, so he's still moving around very fast, and he's not missing out too much. But, you know, we haven't talked too much about this guy. He's he's farming really well. Yeah. He's already 12k net worth, almost almost finished up his Lincolns with the boost travel as well as the Midas. And uh, he's, he's slowly becoming a factor. You know, Morphling, he stopped getting picked because his ability to transition into the mid-game was so weak, because his laning phase was so crippled from the loss of stats. But hey, when you can pick up a Midas, Blue to Travel, and be the highest net worth on the game, it's some one of the scenarios that could definitely make it work. And I was concerned about the Midas, because something we've seen before in games is people go Midas, you get punished heavily for it, you're still very squishy, you're not maybe doing the most damage because, yeah, up attack speed, but if you don't hit hard, it doesn't matter too much. But because of the lack of Shadow Blade out of Slock early, since he also went a Midas, and because this Viper actually having a bit harder time than we maybe expected, nobody's punishing Morphling. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously very hard to do so because if the Wyvern or the Spirit Breaker aren't in position, and to be honest, even if they are, like their ability to ability to burst down a Morphling is like it's not there right now. They need a lot more items on Slark to be a potent threat, 
And of course they would need the iron shell as well as the viper to if possible. Artez caught without mana at top here. Oh goodness, he's getting back in back, but he's very close. He's morphing strength. He's going to get Winter's Curse and Shallow Grave. He might still be able to get out of this with the help of his Dazzle. And there's a hook shot in if they can just cogs him away. But one last hit gets the kill. And now the rest of the lineup, although Fodder going very deep. Goretz trying to manage to pull him into the base, but Fodder instead just down to half health. Can Scandal do anything else here? Sonic Wave is on cooldown for 30 more seconds, and Hookshot is down as well. They do throw out a nice little splinter blast. Jerex may be in a spot of trouble. I think he has another cold embrace for himself if he's worried at all. So, really nice pick off on Ortez, and kind of funny because, you know, you think you're that close to your base, probably why he was limping back to base. He had no mana. Not the ch not the uh, case. Yeah, there's obviously a lot of good vision coming out of Liquid on that side, and again, it's a spirit breaker on the map. You always have to watch out whether you're getting charged or not. Or not. And this is a level two spirit breaker at 10 minutes into the game. Look at him now. He's got a shadow blade. Yeah. Shadow blade level 11, doing good work. And the shadow blade here does feel like sometimes spirit breakers go. Uh, Glimmer Cape, sometimes they go Shadow Blade. Here I really like the Shadow Blade because it's that surprise assassination and assassination factor. And since you do always get the bash on the charge of darkness, then following it up with the Nether Strike, you can maybe lock down the Queen of Pain, maybe lock down the Morphling. Mm -hmm. Very strong indeed. And Kuro falling pretty low here. It's gonna Shadow think... Blade, I think, for the Yeah. Bit worried though. Mm -hmm. So but of course these players much more experienced than me and sometimes you get worried and it's like no, they're completely fine, they know what they're doing. So what do you go after the Lincolns? I feel like this Morphling he's got up the Lincolns, he's gonna be less susceptible to some of the things, although of course Viper Strike might be used to burn that instead of the Winter's Curse. And you can also use Splinter Blast, although it's a bit weird. Actually Jirax Morphling, speaking of Splinter Blast, Jerax, yeah, dead. What do you go next for damage on a Morphling here? Uh Honestly, I don't know. I feel like I feel like Manta's a good option, but he might he might just want to. I don't know. I, I think survivability is still an issue for him, even with just Lincoln's. This is one of those games where this Morphling has to hard carry. He has to solo carry this game. Yeah. And uh, for that, he needs six items. And to get to six items, he needs to split push. It and actually. I think he needs a Manta for that. It's actually kind of surprising to me that he went for the Lincolns just because, oh, we have an engagement up top. Nether Strike coming out. Goretz shallow graved up, but Matumba Man, he is here. Can they return? Oh, this is not gonna work. What's not gonna work? So the, the TP, the, the oh, timing yeah. is off. Yeah. He already got bashed off for more than like 3 seconds, so mm -hmm. no matter what, the, that TP was not gonna connect. So, a nice little pick off. I wonder here as well, the Lincolns, I don't think it's bad at all. There are lots of great spells it blocks, and they're all big spells, except for maybe the Splinter Blast. But with the prevalence of something like Lotus Orb, maybe it's something where I would say, actually maybe rely on your teammates to get a Lotus Orb up. Someone like the Clockwork, who's actually farming pretty well. I think the Lotus is definitely a good idea this game. There's a lot of single target they do have to worry about, but that's more of a fight thing. Again, I think Lincoln's is just one of those items. When you're dealing with a Spirit Breaker and a Wyvern as the main control sources on the enemy team, you want it. Especially because like, Lincoln procs the Spirit Breaker, who's mm -hmm. charging away from like 5,000 range across the map. And uh, it's just really good to have in that sense, because you can never get ganked by the Spirit Breaker in that sense. Yeah. So. Tumba Ban finishing up his Sanjan Yasha, so st starting to bring some hurt to the party himself. Oh, this is new. Hmm? And they're Roshan now. Uh, just tanking up with the Replicate Illusion. This is a really, really good Roshan. They're doing it without a medallion, and doing they're doing it quite fast. Yeah, and it looks like actually some members of Liquid having an idea, but they're not going to get there fast enough. Matumba Man coming in, and he is going to be late to the Roshan. He might get a pick off here onto the Rubik, but maybe they're fine trading that. He's in his Shadow Dance form, and can they get any sort of other kill? The rest of... Okay, yeah, they just let the Rubik die. I think that's fine if you're not feeling yeah. like you're ready to engage, especially with the Replicate. Replicate yeah, actually was fine. still fine, so... <laughs> Uh, that again, that was a really, really good Roshan coming out of them. That was fast. They, it seemed pretty deliberate too. They don't have the best warding around the area, but they just recognized where Liquid's heroes are with their warding and said, "Hey, I don't think they can respond in time, so let's do it." And and they took it down pretty quickly, faster than I had imagined. This Morphling actually hits. Uh, if he's able to get free right clicks off, he yeah. hits for almost 200 damage a hit. It's pretty good. And another thing to mention is they had good, like as you said, they had the good vision on where Liquid's heroes were, and they had map, they had areas pushed out, so it wasn't as obvious, you know. Sometimes, oh, okay. Scandal, you, I know you have ags, but sometimes you scare me when you sonic wave a creep wave, especially when a push is coming on your bottom lane. So. Yeah, this is actually, that was actually not a good ultimate. I think that, that shows Liquid that even though there's an Aegis on the other team, they can still apply some pressure. And as you and said, it looks like they're poised to do so. It buys wasted time on that Aegis, because they know Scandal's probably not going to initiate until his ult is back up, and so now Ortez, they can go on him a little bit, or even that Ortez will just dodge them. 
Because they could choose to wait out this Aegis on the side of Liquid. Mm -hmm. so. That Viper Illusion being such a nuisance here. Yeah. And Fada is being healed up. Yeah, somebody needs to hold the Viper Illusion and then we get funky stuff happening, but no such... Uh, no such luck. We're gonna see a slow siege in. Scandal does have his ult back, and I think a lot of this... Oh, the initiation mind control just four-man vacuum from oh nowhere! There's the charge! There's the Winter's Curse! Did that just happen? They've got the Queen of Pain, they've got Gorech and Artez. He's trying to wave form away, but oh, he manages to replicate out, but he's in the back lines of the fight with the uh, uh, clockwork going down. Where did Artez end up going? He's back in base. Okay, I don't know. Mind Control just walked up there. Did I see yeah, that he, wrong? They, they he didn't. just walked in straight up. And like, Kuroki charged from an angle that they weren't expecting it. So but the Mind Control vacuum good, but... came before the charge is what stunned yeah. me. Like, he just literally walked in, said, hello, guys. I'm a Doxia. Yeah, that was that was actually very sloppy coming out of Yellow Submarine. So even the, like this morphing now, he's picked up a Eagle Horn. I'm not sure if he's going for the E-Blade still. Something that's uh, faded into the past, but he's not going to be able to hold anything alone. If... At the very least, they're going to lose tier 3 towers. Yeah. And this game, suddenly, in Liquid's favor after that team fight, they were definitely pulling ahead slowly, but uh, I wasn't expecting them to take the win here. Matumba Man, is he going to... Oh, he goes oh down! Oh my goodness, Matumba Man. Morphling Sniper Morphling. Never let him be called anything else, and uh, Matumba Man making a bit of a big mistake. It's going to actually secure them the defensive racks, I think, if Matumba Man were around. It depends. People were respawning. It would be close either way, and hookshot off the mark, unfortunately. So, Yellow Submarine getting a second life. Yeah, um, to be honest, I don't, I'm not sure if that changes like what just happened with Matumba Man's death. I don't know if that changes the dynamic of how this game will proceed from here on out. Again, Liquid's Wombo combo is ridiculously strong, and Yellow Submarine, they definitely got caught with their pants down. But like, I see another like at least two, three man vacuum into a Wyvern Curse happening, and it's just it's, it's not hard to execute against those heroes that are always going to have to show themselves to an extent. Additionally... So, Oh, yeah, Mind Control yeah. has the blink as well, so I mean, he got away with the walk up that time. He doesn't need it, though. And yeah, if he has a 4 staff now, too, so he can close a lot more distance than before. And he's got 2k gold. If he ends up getting the Shivas or the BKB, it'll become that much easier. Yeah. So, again, uh, even with Matumba Man's death here, Artez, he's, he's got up an E-Blade now, and if they don't get a whole bunch of kills with this combo and threaten the whole, whole map on Liquid, which I don't think they will be able to, then they're looking at a tough scenario yet again. So, Kuroki has casually got 3.6k gold, and actually might think that he's going oh for a gank. Goodness. Oh, Matumba man, that is not where you want to be. He's going to leap down to the low ground, the hook shot. Oh. He blinked to dodge the hook. That was nice. That was pretty sweet. It's, it's going to be what it's going to be, and we're going to have another team fight. And here comes Mind Control. He is on his way over. The lineup of Yellow Submarine have to be careful. Fodder actually going forwards while... Oh, blowing oh, the up snipe. the Wyvern. Another snipe. And now Fodder is in a bit of trouble, but here it comes. We've got to charge in, and there's a wall vacuum onto three this time. But that is good enough. Gorich taking a lot of damage. The Poshka just saying, I need to leave. And they're actually going to kill out Gorich. And Artez... Oh, Gorich I think falls here, but Artez getting another one of those snipes. Artez is hitting hard here, although he might be in trouble because both him and his replicate are really nearby. They pick off the Queen of Pain. He's got out the Ethereal Blade and going for the TP, but Vacuum, it should be... Oh. They managed to burn the Aegis, and he is... Yeah, he's running away his Replicate, so he should be able to get out there. He's actually going oh, for the Snipe Fata. onto Fodder. Ortez is out, though. Yellow Submarine doing a lot better in these fights, considering this Vacuum that's coming out. Because I have to say, Mind Control playing really well. Yeah, so uh, the MVPs of these fights, for sure, are definitely Ortez on Yellow Submarine side, and Mind control on the side of Liquid. Uh, Fada going in a little bit deep, and of course he kind of got isolated by the Daya's clockwork there. And mind control came in to try and save him, but unfortunately the winner's curse was already eliminated from the team fight because our test sniped him out with the E Blade combo. And hey, if you're gonna get snipes like that to start the fight 4v5, you know, it's like it's basically better than a Doom. Yeah. So it was also just he went super deep with it, but of course Morphling, a very mobile hero, so he was in and out. And it was something funny too where Fada also dived really deep to... Uh, he just knew he was tanky enough, especially with this yeah. new AC coming out. And he was just kind of in the middle of mem four members of Yellow Submarine, not going down for quite a while there. Mm -hmm. I think I think Fada might really look into a Manta style by now. There's a lot of single target clicks and a lot of single target focus coming out of Yellow Submarine that he wants to evade, especially the E-Blade combo, even with Corrosive Skin. That's a combo that's always going to hurt you. And mm. uh, if you just dodge the E-Blade, which is a projectile now, you can definitely just... Uh, proceed to be stronger in the fight. And so it's either a BKB, I think, or a Manta that should be his next item. 
Kuroki picking up the Lotus Orb himself. When it reflects the Ethereal Blade, it does it based on your own stats, right? Lotus Orb? Uh, I, I believe it does. It's like yeah. kind of recasting the ability. Yeah. But uh, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on this one. <laughs> I've never seen a Lotus Orb E-Blade interaction this far because nobody buys both items in the same game ever yeah. <laughs> these days. Fun thing we saw last game, I don't know, you probably know about this one, but it was something I'd seen for the first time. Uh, a charge, if the target you're charging smokes, the charge oh, is yeah, just yeah. cancelled. I... First time seeing that in an earlier game, and that was pretty exciting. Um, just, it's not something that happens terribly often, you know? So. Uh, but yeah, this... Lotus Orb, so something actually funny, for Yellow Submarine, I was mentioning how they can get a Lotus Orb. I actually think it's always really risky to get a Lotus Orb into the Spirit Breaker, because I'm the Spirit Breaker. If I'm across the map, maybe I'm like chilling here farming, I see someone casually cast the Lotus Orb, or maybe there's another engagement on their ally, I might just charge them to make the person yeah, yeah, who's Lotus Orb have awful positioning. Yeah, it's it's actually very good in that sense. Um, you can really screw around with their usage. Yeah. But uh, generally speaking, it's it's something they needed as well, this team. So it's going to be hard. If Kroki plays around it and really messes with their positioning, then it might just go uh, in the other way yeah. and perform itself as a double-edged sword type of thing. But for now, they need it. And uh, no real Radiant's complaints here. So tower is under attack. And... We will be seeing Morphling continuing to get his farm up, working on that Scotty, most likely his next item. Miposhka also has a Vlads for the team, so they're really betting it all on this. Uh, yeah, they, this Morphling has to carry. He has to carry 1v5 this game. And he's actually getting the scenario to do so, so far. 21k net worth, the next guy up is actually mind control at 16k almost. <laughs> well, that's it's what you get when you land amazing uh, vacuum combos. Yeah. Radiance top tower is under um, attack. Oh, he's going for it, and they just miss out. So Morphling escaping and Mind Control not able to make it latch. I would say with these vacuums and then the charges through by Kuroki, oh, they're going again and not, no such luck. It's almost like having some strange sort of black hole. It's like their own. Because <laughs> of the charge through, they're getting a really long duration on a lot of heroes. Mm -hmm. So... Um, now, looking around the map, we still have a huge lead for Liquid. I'm a little bit surprised by that just because of how well the Morphling is doing, but of course the Queen of Pain having a rough time herself. 12,000 net worth lead and 12,000 experience for Liquid. Yeah, it's gonna get a little bit worse now. There's Roaching and I don't think Liquid has a clue about it. Yeah, and the Scotty is finished up. Another interesting thing to point out is I believe they're going, yeah, very few people worried about buyback here, despite the state of the game. For Liquid, I don't think that's unusual, because they have a lot of towers left. But for Yellow Submarine, I think you have to stop being careful, because if you take one bad engagement, you can be out. Yeah, for sure. But this Morphling has Aegis now, so his margin of error just uh, expanded pretty vastly, I would say. Uh, at the very least, if he gets comboed down by a couple of ultimates, he's happy about it because when he comes back, he's going to be able to fight without dealing with those uh, crowd control ultimates. Yeah. So that's a really big deal for them. I'm and surprised Liquid actually didn't contest them at all for that, the, that Roche. Uh, they should have had a timer and recognized, I think. Oh, Gorich is probably dead. Yeah, Gorich, he manages to throw out some Viper Strike action. Matumba Man may be in a bad spot, but there it is. Reflected, it doesn't do nearly enough damage to the Morphling. Actually, his Lincoln popped it, never mind. And so now, Fodder taking a lot of damage as well. Artez is Winter's Cursed up, but again, those are the ultimates. He doesn't mind burning that, but the rest of his team falling. Scandal melts, but Poshia's gonna fall too. And now it's uh, gonna be Morphling against the world. I don't know if Artez has this. He immediately gets away. And uh, just like Lost Team Fight, I don't know how well he defends against the rest of Liquid, and this might just be GG for Game One. Yeah, I think so. Again, the Morphling, uh, it worked out until this point because he has the highest net worth, and they did a good job in the lanes and got a couple more kills than they should. But you look at this team fight, look at the lineups overall. I just, I don't see how Yellow Submarine can, can take this game past like 40 minutes unless Morphling is just completely out of uh, control, snowballing. Yes. So, yeah, there's there's so much sustain coming out of Liquid 2 with the Guardian Greaves, heals from Wyvern, Urns. They're gonna keep going. Oh, Tez, he's turned into a little bit of a piggy and he's vacuumed back and now a lot of damage coming out from the Man gets the bash. Of course he does. I'm not gonna be surprised if we see GG's coming out. And he gets the bash again onto Scandal. He doesn't... He doesn't have the Abyssal yet. He's just bashing like a... He is a bash lord. He practices, clearly. And that's our GG call. We're going to head into a game two. Thank you so much for joining me, Clairvoyance. This was fantastic. Do you have some final words? Oh, no. I'm, so unfortunately, I can't join for game two because I have some errands to run. But uh, I wish you good luck. And hopefully, Liquid demonstrates some good Dota again. And Yellow Submarine, maybe they can pick it up in game two as well. Yeah, we'll be seeing. Once again, folks, you've been watching Star Ladder, Liquid versus Yellow Submarine. I'm Llama Down Under. I was joined by Clairvoyance. Please show him your love. Do you have Twitter? 
No, I'm a, I'm a hermit without You're any social media, okay, so you... don't worry about me, but I'll show up eventually. <laughs> anyway, I would love your feedback on how to get better. You can leave that at uh, Llama Down Under on Twitter, Twitch, or Facebook, really. I also will say hello in the comments afterwards or whatever, but I am going to leave it to a word from the Star Ladder sponsors, so please enjoy, and we'll see you in next game.